Hello and welcome to another Alice user question video. Um, so I have a comment on my YouTube channel. This person asked, how can you add a time listener in Alice that keeps track of time and a text model to display it? So basically what they're saying is, how can I add a timer that works in my program that shows what time it is, how many seconds I've been going or how many quarters of a second the game has been going? Um, and that's a great question. I, I, I think it's the second time someone's asked me that. And I, because I, I know I've been wanting to do a video on this for about a year, uh, maybe longer. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so I have a blank scene here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into scene setup, go into shapes, and I'm going to add a text model. And all of these defaults are okay, so click OK. I'm going to just use translation and move it away from us a little bit. And um, just in case, I'm going to add a sphere in here so we have something. This is for later on uh, if, if we get to it. OK, so once we've done that, we can go back to edit code. And uh, OK, there's initialize event listeners, and that has my first method. This is something. These two are automatically created when you do a new, uh, when you go to file and you go new in Alice. Um, it will create initialize event listeners, my first method, and then it'll put my first method into this scene activated procedure. Um, Whatever is in your scene activated procedure will run when you hit run. So. That is cool. So, uh, where is it? Okay, here. Add event listener. So the person who did the comment, they I think were talking about this add time listener. So, under initialize event listeners, you can add an event listener, scene activation, and add time listener. Now, I don't. I've looked at this several times, and I don't fully understand how this works or how I can get this to work. So I'm not going to show you how to use their built-in add time listener because I don't fully understand it yet. Once I once I get a better grasp of it, I might do a, a, a few videos on event listeners. I'm not totally sure if I'll have time to do that. But what I'm going to show you today is how to create your own method or your own procedure that is a time listener and that updates this text right here so that you can see how many seconds you've been going. So to do that, we're going to go into scene and we're going to add a procedure and we're going to add a property. First, I'm going to add a property. Um, we want it to be a decimal number because we, if we want, we want to be able to count in quarters of a second or tenths of a second. Uh, whole numbers would be good if we only wanted to count in seconds, like one second, two second, three second. But for this, we're just going to go with decimal because it allows us to do more stuff. We're going to call our, it time keeper prop because it's a property. And then I'll just do custom decimal number and set it to zero initially. Choose OK, and it appears down there. So we created the property. Now we're going to create a procedure like my first method. Add create procedure, and we are going to call it timekeeper because it's going to keep track of how much time we've done so far. Now, the first thing we want to do is go on this, uh, click on it if you're not, and go down to set timekeeper property. And then custom decimal number and choose zero to initialize it. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a loop so that we can update uh, what time it is every so often. Now, for this case, I'm going to drag in a while loop and just choose true. Now, this is a, just a side note. We've just created something called an infinite loop. And what that means is this will run forever and ever and ever. Um, in Alice, uh, loops run around 100,000 times a second. So this will actually run 100,000 times a second if we just click run. And it will. Uh, the reason you don't want an infinite loop, something that runs forever and ever, normally is that because it's running 100,000 times a second, it ends up uh, using up all of your system memory for this program, and it ends up crashing the program. 
So normally you don't want to have it where true is true, which is always going to be the case. True is always going to be true, and so this will run forever and ever. You don't want that. But for this case, we're going to do uh, we're going to add in a, a line of code that will make it where it's not it, where almost it's not an infinite loop. So it'll kind of take care of the issue with this running so many times that it erases or that it uses up all the memory. So in here we're going to put three lines of code. The first line is going to be, let's go down to this text model and we are going to set the value of the text model. Just choose hello for right now. So this is the text model and we want to set what its value is. So once we've dragged this in, we can go down to the plus or question mark plus question mark. And for the first value we're going to choose custom or uh, custom text string and then for the second value we'll choose decimal number and there's our timekeeper property so it asked me what my custom text string is so I'm just gonna say time Timkey time space or time colon space so if we read this what it says is set this text model set its value to the word time colon space and then whatever value is in the timekeeper property. So we've created a timekeeper property now and we've told it to display the value in the timekeeper property but now we need to change the timekeeper property so that it it changes so that we can update this more than once because at this point we set the timekeeper property to zero and then we display the value time colon space zero and that's not really what we want we want it to change from zero because we want if if it doesn't change what time it is if it always stays at zero then it doesn't really work for us so what we do is we're gonna go to this again and we're gonna drag in that time set timekeeper property again and just choose whatever for right now next click on it and we're gonna kinda do the same thing we did before go to math go to plus for the first value choose timekeeper property for the second value choose one so what that says is every time I go around this loop add one to the value of the timekeeper property so the first time around it starts out at zero so it's going to display time zero and then we add one and it goes around and now since the value is one it says time one and it goes around and now time two so that's how it'll iterate now, I'm not going to hit run right now because we still have an infinite loop that's going to run 100,000 times a second or something like that. What we need to do is add that line of code that'll make this more manageable. And to do that, you go to any procedure. You can go to this or this ground, camera, text model, sphere, whichever one. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the procedures and the last one is delay. So we're going to drag this up and I'm going to actually put it in between those two and I'm going to set the value to 1. So what this will do is it will stop running the program, it will delay it for 1 second. So uh, if we read this, what's going on? First we set the timekeeper property to 0, then we enter the loop, and then we set the value of the text model, this guy right here, to time, and then whatever value is in there is 0, so time 0 then we wait for a second and then we add one to the value of the timekeeper property so the timekeeper property is now one second so it goes up it loops back around and now we display time equals one and because we're delaying for one and we're adding one the timekeeper property will actually be accurate now if we try and run this there's going to be an issue though nothing happens we run it and this doesn't get updated this hello so how do we update it? Why isn't it working? Because everything in here looks like it's working fine. And the reason is that I told you at the beginning of the this video that anything in this scene activated will run when you click run. If it's not in here though, it won't run. So what we need to do is go to this, which we're already on, go down to our timekeeper, which we've been creating, and drop it in. And now it'll run but there's one slight issue before we click the run button normally you stick your most of your program in my first method 
And what we've done is we've created this timekeeper. And so it says do in order. So first it will run everything that's in my first method, and then it'll try and start keeping track of time. And we don't want it to do that. It doesn't really work the other way, because if we do it this way, it'll get stu stuck on timekeeper forever, and it'll never execute my first method. So we don't want these to be done in order. We want them to happen at the same time. To do that, we're just going to go down here, grab a do together, drag it up to the top, let go, and drop both of these in. So now, whatever program you have in my first method is going to be running at the same time that the timekeeper is going to be running. So now if we click run, it begins updating and it counts every second. So that is how we do this. I want to show you two quick things really fast. Okay, the first one is let's say we want to count in something other than a second. We can go half a second here, half a second here, uh, so we delay by half a second and add a half a second to the timekeeper property. Now if we click run, it will count by half a second. 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, etc. I can also do it to other times, say a quarter of a second. Um, if I click run, it'll say it'll count by quarters of a second now. And it's accurate. Um, one note, if you choose a custom decimal number like 0.1, you're going to have some issues. Uh, and let me show you what happens if you run custom decimal number 0.1. This is just an aside. This wasn't what I was going to show you. Okay. If once you get to the full second, like 3.1, there's an issue. Um, and it just the way decimal numbers are, it doesn't actually display correctly. So um, it has like 10 different decimals after that that you don't want to be there. You probably don't want to do it in tenths of a second. So you probably want to stick to these values here or 0.75 seconds or values that are like a quarter or values that are like a quarter of a second or in full seconds. So I'm just going to go to set 0.5 for right now. So, so I can set both of these values and then once I've set both of these values it, and click run, it'll run it in that many in that increment. But let's say that I wanted to update it from here. I didn't want to go into my timekeeper method and change this value and change this value. I wanted to change it from right here. For example, this uh, set fog density. I can change the fog density from just f from right here. There's this option right here where I can click it and I can change the parameter of what the fog density is. So I'm going to delete that. We want to do this kind of the same thing for timekeeper. And the way to do that, to access stuff inside the method without ever going to the method, is that you set, you add a parameter. So I'm going to add a parameter. It's a decimal number because it's going to be replacing this decimal number right here. So choose decimal number and give it a name, uh, something that makes sense. For example, increment, uh, be and click that I understand because we want it to change uh, the increment of time. So once I create that, up here there's a new parameter called decimal, or that is a decimal number and it's called increment. And when I scroll over it, anywhere that I can drag and drop it into, uh, there's a box over it. So for right now, I'm going to drag it into the delay and I'm going to drag it into the timekeeper property where I increased it by one. And now, if I go back to initialize event listeners, that increment is right here, and I can set it to, say, 0.5. Now, what I've done is all I've done is made it where that 0.5 gets placed right here and right here, so that when I run the program, it counts by 0.5, by half a second. If I am over here, I can change it to another value, say 0.25, and it counts by 0.25. So I've just made it easier to change the time increment in the timekeeper um, by using parameters. And that's parameters are a way to access stuff inside the method without ever going into the method. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. The second thing, and this is kind of cool, is let's say that our ball here is our main character and that as it moves, we want the time increment to also move. 
So how do we do that? We could also say that the camera, or it's a first person game, and that the camera is our main character. And as the camera moves, we want the words to move. How do we do that? Now I'm not going to fully explain it to you because this is already a pretty long video, but I'm going to give you a hint that if you want, you can start looking into it yourself. If I go down to, so I'm going to choose this text model, and I'm going to scroll down the procedures until I get to set vehicle. Now, when you're riding in a vehicle, when you're riding in a car, wherever the car goes, you go. And that's the concept behind this set vehicle procedure. If I drag it up here, actually, I'm, I'm not going to show you, oh, well, okay, I'll kind of show you. If I drag it up here and set the this sphere, what it's going to say is, wherever this sphere moves, move this text model also. So if this sphere starts to move somewhere, the text model is going to move with it. I could have also set it to this camera. And what that says is wherever the camera goes, wherever our main view goes, move the text model with it. Just like as if it's as if you're in a car, wherever the car goes, you go. Wherever the camera goes, the text model is also going to go. So what you can do in that case is uh, go into scene setup and use the rotation, translation, and resize to move this down to where it's in the corner of your screen, and then you can, uh, and then you set that vehicle, and wherever you move, it looks like that text model is locked into the bottom of your screen right here. So uh, I have other videos that show you how to move the camera and how to do first person, third person stuff, um, but. Uh, if, if you're interested, that's kind of how you can keep this so that even if your camera is moving or your character is moving, you can have a text model vehicled to it um, and then it just moves along with it. So hopefully this video has been really helpful. Um, th this is a really powerful technique. This is something you see in a lot of video games where there's a, a heads up display of the time uh, down somewhere in the screen of the video game so that the user knows how long they've been playing or um, another thought is you could actually use the same procedure and create a health bar say the health starts out at a hundred percent and as time goes on the character might lose health if they're swimming or whatever and the health bar could go down you would use the same procedure uh, the, the same timekeeper method you would just change the name from timekeeper to health and you would just access it through uh, here and you could in here you could set up a way to increment where you change the health so hopefully this has been a really useful video this is a really powerful technique and I'm sure that as you uh, start using it your video games are, or your stories are going to look more polished and more professional um, hope this is helpful sorry this is a really long video but it's a pretty powerful technique and I just wanted to show you this because it's it's super important okay I will talk to you next time and see you in another Alice uh, user question video or just Alice video or I've just started a series on Gmail uh, teaching you how to use Gmail do basic Gmail stuff so I might see you in one of those series okay I'll talk to you later bye